Hey everybody, this is Structural Steve again. In this video, I'm going to explain how feature definitions work and talk about feature symbologies, element templates, levels, and attributes. So a new concept that got uh, introduced to us here in the, the civil products like OpenBridge Modeler, OpenBridge Designer, or even Open Roads Designer are feature definitions. And there's something that you know weren't in, was not in the old VDI, SS10, MicroStations, um, you know, but they were introduced to us in the civil products and the Connect Edition ones. So I think it's worth knowing what exactly they're doing in the background because when things aren't working properly or, or aren't looking properly, you know, you know how to troubleshoot since you know understand you know, what's going on in the background and how they're working. So um, it, overall, it's just a, a way of organizing your information even better. And we'll kind of start at the bottom of this this tree structure over here, this hierarchy, because this is kind of how it gets wrapped up into the feature definitions. But you know, the first level or first way we can control how our how our elements look are attributes right here. Now, attributes can be line weight. Line style, color, transparency, and priority. So those are the normal things that always existed in MicroStation, right? Even back to the old days of VDI. Um, so that's those those uh, those properties over here, right? Color, line style, line weight, transparency, and priority. So nothing new there, right? Just attributes. Same thing we've always had before. The next level up in terms of kind of organizing how elements look are going to be levels. And the levels, again, nothing new here. We've had those uh, for, you know, for a long time in MicroStation. Levels just control the attributes. So all these attributes here get controlled in levels. So if I open up my level manager here, we can see all these attributes here are being controlled with these different levels. And then the next step up in that kind of tree structure, the hierarchy of, of organizing, uh, is going to be element templates and again element templates are actually not anything new to us it's something that's been around again since the, the vdi days in the old microstation um, but a lot of times we just never used them so we're not familiar with them so the way element templates work are they control levels they control hatch patterns so if i were to cut um you know cut a 3d solid and i wanted it to automatically get hashed with like a concrete pattern then i can i can set that up with an element template it can control textiles, dimension styles, and you can also attach item types to element templates. So element templates are actually going to be right over here, again, with your in your attribute area. You can drop this down here and go to manage. And then I'm in a, an FDOT workspace. That's why I have all this uh, library structure set up over here all with all my DG and lib files. So let's break open the structures one here and look at, like, say, substructure, concrete, you know, concrete cap. Right, the only thing that this particular element template is doing is specifying what level to put the element on here. That's it. Everything else is by level. So really it's just the level that, that it's picking and controlling things with. Now you could add other things like the hatch pattern. You can like right click in here and add and do uh, like that hatch pattern or text and different things here. But um, you know, that's not the way this one's set up here. So you know no need to do anything with that. So that's element template. So basically everything below this all below element templates get wrapped up in element templates so all the attributes get controlled by levels and then the levels are then wrapped up and pulled into element templates and that's kind of the same way it works as you go up here and the next new for I should say the first new concept really are feature symbologies so feature symbologies the only difference with these is it's just a way to sort element templates by geometric characteristic and I'll kind of show you what I mean here with that in a second here so I'm gonna open up my Explorer and let's look at the standards and I'll pop open my standards I'll look at my libraries and since I'm an OBM I'm gonna open up the uh, OBM one here actually I'm already in there so I'm gonna look in feature symbologies And now I'm gonna open up that OBM one here. And then, okay, so remember I said feature symbologies sorts element templates by geometric characteristic. So what is that element? Is it a line? Is it a point? Is it a you know, profile? Or is it a solid? Or is it a surface? That's what I mean by geometric characteristics. And the only thing that those um, feature symbologies do is 
pull in element templates. That's it. It just kind of organizes them into that geometric characteristic. So if I open up solid here and I stick with my substructure, which I looked at for my element templates and look at, I think it was the cap one here. And then I open up my properties. Now I see that it, all it's doing in this case here for me in, in OBM, it's pulling in the concrete cap element template. That's all it's doing. So I go back in my element template manager and I go back into OBM structures and substructure. There's that concrete cap. That's that element template that's getting pulled into here. All right, that's it right there. So that's all it's doing. Feature symbologies, all that's doing is organizing your element templates by geometric characteristic. And then the next level up here, which is the one we actually use and apply when we, when we are modeling things in OBM and ORD, um, are gonna be feature definitions. We're finally at the level where we recognize this as something that we use during the modeling process. You know, we used to assign, you know, just set a level and then um, draw stuff in 2D. And so setting levels was kind of what we're used to doing. Now what we're gonna be doing in this modeling or model-centric workflow is setting feature definitions. So, you know, what is a feature definition and what does it do? Well, all it does really, again, is just provide another way of organizing things. So it sorts the category or sorts by category of what it actually is in real life. So it sorts my feature symbologies by what they actually are in real life. And all it does is it pull in, they pull in feature symbologies, that's it. And one of the key point is you can attach item types to feature symbologies so that the item types automatically get applied to elements when you set a feature definition for that element. So let's take a look at what that looks like in here. And what do I mean by, you know, sorts of by category of what it is in real life. If I open up OVM here and here we go. So support lines, supports, which are peers, decks, beams, bearings, barriers, right? These are real things in like real life here. So these feature definitions just help sort those into that kind of category, another level of category. So if I look at uh, do supports and substructure, and I look at, let's look at uh, peer with concrete pile. So there's gonna be a bunch of different uh, feature symbologies that get wrapped up into this one here. But if I look at the cap part of this, this peer, I see that the feature symbology that it pulls in is cap, right? So now if I go into the feature symbologies again here, and look at that solid substructure cap, right? There's that feature symbology that's getting pulled in right here. So again, what that's doing is this feature symbology, or sorry, feature definition up here. Now remember, we're in the feature definitions. This feature definition that I set when I model something in OVM is going to be setting, subs or su subsequently setting the feature symbology the element template, the level, and all the attributes. So by setting the feature definition, I'm setting all these other things below here because all these things below get wrapped up into that, that feature definition there. And again, I think it's important to know these things because if something doesn't look right or you know, elements aren't uh, displaying correctly or anything like that, then it could be something wrong with one, one of these levels in here in terms of you know, something might be wrong with the feature definition or the feature symbology or the element template or anything below here. And you know, by knowing how these things work in the background, you can easily troubleshoot uh, whatever you did, whatever kind of problem is you're having here. And one last important thing to kind of point out, you know, most of these kind of things are going to be set up for us by um, our organization or, or DOT or something like that. But if for some reason you are going in there and, and creating things yourself, you know, you always want to start at the lowest level. You want to start with by creating a level and assigning all the attributes to that level. And then the next thing you would do is create an element template and then assign the, the level to that element template and anything else you want. And then you would go in and you would create a new feature symbology. And then you would pull in whatever element templates are associated with that feature symbology. And the last step in that creation process is, is to create your feature definition and then set the uh, symbologies, the feature symbologies with that particular feature definition there. So it's important to go in that order uh, to make sure that everything links up properly. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and share the video. And I'll see you guys in the next video.